Hi everyone and welcome to watch my recent game collecting video from April to June releases and for once I feel like I sort of be calling these first impressions anymore because I've actually finished almost all of the games, just a couple of games still going through um, one visual novel and one of the um, re-releases of older games but anyway, let's start with April releases. Biohazard RE3 or Resident Evil 3 Remake. Um, it is pretty much what I expected based on the remake of Resident Evil 2. So more of the same with some differences. <coughs> Like, I'm not <laughs> huge fan. I'm not sure if I'm huge fan of the mm, whole dodging mechanic. Um, yes, there was this similar system in the original RE3 where you could like push the enemies away from you, but how the dodging works in this and on, a, on top of simply dodging <laughs> if you um, time it correctly you also get this weird mm, bullet time or <laughs> slow motion um, with auto aiming mm, to the weak point of the enemy that seems maybe a little bit too much to a Resident Evil game I'm not sure <laughs> Um, I suppose it made some of the boss fights feel quite different compared to mm, most RE boss fights but still in general against normal enemies I felt like that was somewhat <laughs> weird system but yeah otherwise pretty much mm, what I expected maybe mm, a um, little less faithful to the original game in sense of like scenes and places there's quite a lot of differences um, but yeah still I enjoy the game probably my favorite part is the slow beginning where you are simply mm, exploring the downtown area of the raccoon city and I'm still a little bit afraid of the enemies and trying to slowly explore your environments. After that it <laughs> becomes um, much more action heavy, especially those Carlos sections with also Rifle and so on. But yeah, in general I still enjoy the game. And of course there's also this biohazard <laughs> resistance game but yeah because it's mm, um, online multiplayer game I haven't even tried it and probably <laughs> never will I'm not hugely interested in that or <laughs> maybe it even at all but yeah main game for me in this was the biohazard and yeah, I did enjoy it. Maybe not as much as the remake of Resident Evil 2, but still enjoyed it. And next, Final Fantasy 7 remake. At first, this <laughs> cover art looked a little bit weird because, yeah, why is the logo so small and to the side? But then I realized, okay, that was <laughs> how the original games cover art look all looked also I don't have the original version of the game but here's the um, second iteration the international version and the original um, version that had the same logo placement but the rest of the um, cover was simply this white blank so yeah after realizing that I started to appreciate the cover art of this game more still looks <laughs> weird to me because I'm more used to the European 
cover style where the logo is the same part um, it's spread out to fill the entire cover horizontal <laughs> but yeah enough about the cover let's talk about the game um, I must admit I I hadn't played the original version of the game before I started this remake um, only I've played like the I had played the first ma first macro reactor section or and not not <laughs> after that anymore I started Final Fantasy series with eight because at that point I understood enough English to <laughs> actually follow the story and um, enjoy the games but for some reason I never went back and played the seventh game in the series even though so many um, people say the seven is best entry in the series but yeah um, decided to play this anyway before the original and yeah I really like the characters, the story um, and even though the, mm, there's definitely some low quality textures in the remake I still think the world itself looks amazing and there's so many nice scenes throughout the story in the world um, about the combat system I Mm, I feel like there's one quite big problem that I'm not enjoying about the combat and that is how the, mm, um, the ATP meter works which allows you to use skills and magics mm, um, the problem is how the meter recharges because um, basically what you have to do is you have to control the character and use your basic attacks okay there sounds like nothing problem with that but um, the annoying part is that your AI partners don't recharge the ATV meter almost at all very slowly recharges. I do understand the idea is that you kind of fill up the meter with one character to use one of your skills or magics and then quickly during the animation swap to the next character and do the same and keep rotating with your characters. And I suppose it works with two characters but when you add third character to your party there's always going to be one of your characters simply doing pretty much nothing because of that how it how the system works I feel like it will give so much more freedom to choose how you play and which character you control if they will simply balance out the ATP meter recharging mechanic making it so every character in your party recharges the ATP meter at the same rate so it wouldn't be um, based on which character you are controlling. It simply makes the combat system less enjoyable, in my opinion. Um, and still there are a lot of really cool boss fights and I do enjoy the game for the most part. But yeah, that is a little bit of weird choice in my opinion I'm not sure why they did it that way for the most part the combat still is fun but that one that one part makes it less enjoyable in my opinion depending on the uh, um, regarding the um, story part of the game yes it's just the first midcar section of the game of the original game and yes um, in the original game that section of the game lasts only like few hours but still I feel like this 
remake version definitely has enough content for its own release already in this first <laughs> mid car section because the because of the huge scale differences the difference they added so much new scenes and new side quests and so on I feel like it is uh, it feels like a mm, complete release but I'm and I am excited to see how they continue from here and um, but also at the same time I'm a little bit afraid how are they going to do it because are they going to keep up with the same scale to add so much new content to it or are they going to mm, do the opposite and um, start cutting some unnecessary parts of the original game and focus on new different scenes because al already the story seems a little bit <laughs> different compared to the original game's story. But yeah, I still enjoy the game and yeah, it's definitely worth trying out. Even though it is such a small part of the original game story. And next, Poku Hime Project. So it's a visual novel from Nipponichi Software. And mm, the uh, premise for the story is that the main character is kind of <laughs> trying to win this mm, princess voting context, content, context. Contest, <laughs> messing up the words. Contest is the <laughs> word I'm looking for, I suppose. Um, and with help of your hikikomori friend, um, she gives you mm, lessons on like to improve your mm, skills on visual knowledge and spirit. And based on which lessons you choose to take, the story takes different routes and different you get the different endings so there's very little gameplay sim you simply choose which lessons to get but and rest of it is just dialogue and usual visual novel but there's one kind of interesting little detail here someone might have already noticed it from the title of the game because Poku is a mm, word that only is used by boys to describe themselves so yes the main character is actually a boy just cross-dressing as a girl and the game actually uh, describes itself as cross-dressing awakening adventure so yeah uh, I feel like that mm, theme mm, brings some <laughs> quite funny scenes, especially some of those lessons where Akira is mm, trying to tell you how to act more like a girl. But at the same time I feel like there's also some awkward and almost uncomfortable scenes like one where the main character is mm, working as part-time work as a cosplay model and um, there's one character kind of <laughs> weirdly asking you to make a pose showing your butt and Akira simply start <laughs> telling you how to properly make a pose like that and yeah some of those scenes get a little bit weird but yeah still for the most part, I've enjoyed the story and it seems funny to me most of the scenes. So yeah, pretty basic visual novel with pretty much no gameplay at all and a little bit of theme on cross dressing. And next. 
second tensor to three trials of mana way better remake than what second tensor to two secret of mana got mm, it looks better the more reverbed combat system is more fun to play and there's no those te technical issues like crashing like the second tensor to two remake like <laughs> to do mm. so yeah it is way better game in that sense how mm, how well the remake version have been done and yeah the game itself also is quite interesting um, I find it mm, mm, interesting that the um, the game makes you choose your three character party from all the six characters right at the beginning of the game instead of um, working like usual JRPGs where you mm, slowly build up your party and keep switching between the characters. I feel like it makes you more connected to your characters when you can't to when you can't keep swapping them to the others and because the story also changes based on who is your main character and also all six characters have their own mm, somewhat unique playstyle and skills and so on um, so I feel like there's definitely some replay value to it. I've only played it once with these characters and I'm definitely looking forward to play it at least once more with the other three characters as well at some point. So yeah, definitely fun mm, kind of action RPG. Maybe the combat system doesn't have hugely depth to it. It is a mm, little bit basic combat system, but still it's fun and enjoyable. Does the work. <laughs> and next to the only May release that I got here, Xenoblade Definitive Edition. And it's, it's actually the only game that I got as a limited edition this time. <laughs> so surprisingly heavy box because of the huge art book here. Sorry, <laughs> had to take a little bit of water. But anyway, so Xenoblade. Um, it was originally released for Wii and I believe there is some new content in this one that you can mm, right away start from the start menu instead of the original game. Uh, it's been so long since I played the Wii game, Wii version of the game that I decided to <laughs> play through the original mm, content first before you know, starting the new content um, so unfortunately I can't say anything about the new content but yeah the original content is already so amazing I had <laughs> somewhat forgotten how much I loved the original game already um, I suppose at that time I <laughs> preferred um, turn-based combat system in JRPGs even more than I mm, prefer nowadays so the battle system mm, required some getting used to at that time but I do still enjoy it um, I feel like the battle system to some extent um, teached me to mm, appreciate more of the mm, real time combat system. I feel like my mm, biggest um, idea to get used to is how you cannot um, swap your 
swap the party member you are controlling during the combat and because you kind of have to mm, work together with AI members like um, using skills of different characters to uh, like combine different attacks and mm, for the most part the AI works fine so everyone does their job but yeah it definitely required me the, required me some time to get used to the idea that I'm not controlling all of the characters and yeah outside of the combat there's so much to do like this amazing story about mm, how the entire world is mm, all of the characters are living on top of these um, these huge two mm, I suppose titans that are um, frozen in place in middle of combat that everyone lives on these huge colossal titans so the world already is so interesting to find out what is going on and so on and the story about this um, special weapon that seems like almost no one can properly control it is quite interesting and in the cities there's so much to do like huge amount of side quests um, named side characters to get to know and um, in the field so much items to collect and so on so yeah it is amazing JRPG in, in total I feel like it is definitely worth checking out for every JRPG fan I simply love it and next to April releases The Last of Us Part 2 originally I wasn't mm, hugely excited for this game because I felt like the first game mm, was so story focused and I felt like the story was already complete I didn't know where the didn't know how I expected the sequel to continue the story so because of that I wasn't mm, so excited about the game but <laughs> when I started to hear so much controversies about the story I felt like okay I have to mm, try the game myself and see what is all of this talking about and yeah in the end I ended up enjoying the story more than <laughs> most people I guess um, mm, I feel like it's hard to talk about this because it's so heavily story focused and I don't want to spoil anything um, I suppose I just say this that I felt like I wasn't so invested during the mm, I suppose beginning of the story because I felt like the um, kind of a goal and focus for the story felt like it was somewhat uninteresting and mm, unappealing but when the when you get to see some of the other sides of the story I suppose <laughs> um, uh, that, at that point I felt like the story hooked me much more and I couldn't wait to see how it ends and so on so yeah it is interesting story but definitely I enjoyed the first game more I would say <laughs> funny to see these two disc releases now at the end of the console cycle there's already at least three, I believe, Final Fantasy VII and um, Red Dead Revolver 2 and this also. Is there any more than three? Not sure. But yeah, um, story-wise, I think it's worth experiencing um, for the fans of the first game. But gameplay-wise, I feel like <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, it expands the 
expands from the first game with a little bit of new mechanics here and there but for the most part it is the <laughs> same um, somewhat boring shooting as it's been from the first Uncharted game and in general I feel like I'm not anymore that much of a fan of shooting games in general so yeah it is um, interesting game mostly because the story felt like it was somewhat unexpected but I suppose it was quite easy because I simply didn't know what to expect from the story because the first game story felt like felt so complete already and I didn't know how it would <laughs> continue from there but anyway enough about that let's continue to last game here Shoujo Chikoku no Doko, Doku <laughs> Musume so basically meaning hmm, Poison Maiden of Girl Hell and the premise for the story is that the main hero or heroine, whichever you choose, wakes up in this super cute pink hell and meets up with the poison maiden and together they end up like mm, purifying um, personal hells of these young girls who have ex ended up in this hell. Um, Based, based on that, that synopsis I felt like okay that sounds really serious and maybe there's going to be some sad um, story, back, sad background stories to see but I feel like um, for the most part those background stories um, ended up being more funny to me I suppose which seems like an odd thing because yeah um, it seems an mm, odd <laughs> thing to find funny how some of those characters ended up in hell but yeah maybe it <laughs> fits more to the mm, so cute um, visuals that the story isn't as sad and mm, dramatic I suppose as I expected so yeah after realizing that I started to enjoy the story more when I accepted it as it was hmm. but still I think the story is quite interesting premise um, and the combat system it's like <laughs> third person shooter um, uh, but thankfully the focus isn't heavily on the shooting mechanics and um, it also focuses on this um, idea of positioning yourself and your enemies enemies because on those areas there are these pink poison pools of which you obviously take damage but if you lure your enemies in those poisonous pools you can use the power of poison maiden to purify the poison mm, which causes damage to your enemies that are mm, standing in those poison pools so yeah mm, with that mm, quite interesting little mechanic I feel like the shooting <laughs> becomes more interesting and you can also mm, customize your playstyle um, with the powers of all of those girls who you end up of saving um, some of them give you new mm, weapon styles or armors or like um, buffs or mm, etc so yeah mm, thanks to the customization I felt like the mm, combat system stayed fun for the most of the game thankfully it isn't hugely long I feel like the combat might end up getting more boring if the game was longer but yeah in the end I ended up 
enjoying it. Interesting premise for the story and the con combat system is fun for um, short <laughs> sessions, I suppose. And that's all the recent games. I suppose I talk a little bit about um, these retro um, purchases that I've made lately. So as I said um, on the Final Fantasy VII Remake, I hadn't played the original version of the game and <laughs> I suppose this is the original either because it's the second iteration. Um, if you're not familiar, this international version is pretty much mm, same version as the version we got here in West in English. Mm, basically difference to the original version is that this adds, adds mm, some new bosses to the end game and so on. So I started to play this after I finished the remake and yeah, I've been enjoying it. Um, I feel like <laughs> I do definitely enjoy more of the mm, turn-based combat system than the combat system in the remake version of the game. Um, one part that I'm not huge fan is the um, material system. Um, I feel like the idea is great that you level up these materials that um, give you skills so you can um, level up a bunch of materials with your um, characters from beginning and when you get new characters you can simply swap those old materials to the new character and already the new character um, can use some of those more higher level skills and magics. So yeah, I like the idea, but what I don't like it like about it is how much I end up spending so much time to trying to optimize everything and constantly keep swapping the materials around. I feel like it wastes so much time to um, try to optimize everything. And uh, yeah, I feel like that is so... Mm, unnecessary thing to complain about because of course you don't need to play so optimally but it's something that I simply have to do and yeah because of that I'm not a huge fan of the system still I enjoy the idea too and I believe one difference to the first turn Western English release is the fourth disc. If I'm not mistaken, there was only three discs in the English release, and no worries, <laughs> the fourth, fourth disc is simply a guide. And <laughs> it is interesting to see mm, um, the guide part of the disc, but I feel like nowadays it's so unnecessary to have that guide like this because it's so much easier nowadays to um, check any of that info online like for example if you want to know if there is some stealable item on one of the bosses you can so easily just check it from wiki online with your phone or something instead of um, resetting the console swapping the disk and slowly try to browse the mm, enemy list to find out to find the correct enemy without <laughs> proper um, search function um, but yeah it is interesting to see mm. but thankfully there's also some like concept art to enjoy and so on also there's one video showing the game in some development build, so there's a little bit of changes, differences. It is very short video, but um, for me, because um, I like programming and development of the games is interesting, I found that short video very interesting. And what else is there in the disc like? Um, this interactive map where you can sc 
crawl through the places and so on. Mm. And it gives you some little bit of info about different environments and so on. So yeah, it is interesting disk, but the <laughs> guide part seems somewhat mm, as unnecessary <laughs> for these modern days. But yeah, I've been so far I've been enjoying the game. I need to find more time to <laughs> actually finish it. And yeah, seeing how the mm, story continues in here after the mid-car section at the beginning makes me even more excited for how the remake is going to continue someday. And after buying that I also ended up getting another retro game, Final Fantasy Tactics. Um, I feel like <laughs> I'm to some extent joking, saying that mm, this is actually my favorite game in the Final Fantasy series because it's, it is such, such, just a spin-off spin to the series. But because, mm, um, especially when I was younger, I loved to play mm, those strategy games and sim like mm, simulation management games and also loved to play mm, RPGs on consoles. Um, so when I first played Final Fantasy Tactics it felt like it was so perfect combination of these two completely different styled games. I simply fell in love right away and it is still one of my favorite games of all time. So I decided also to get the Japanese copy of the game because I've only played the Western English release of the game and I believe there is some mm, some content that was cut out of the English release simply because there wasn't time to translate it. Nothing major, just some side story content or something like that. Still haven't played it yet though. Let's check the insides, what we have here. The spine card. A little collectible card of the main character. Some advertisement for merchandise. More advertisement. I believe like guide or something. And manual. So yeah. <laughs> complete in box I suppose. Usually most of the time I'm um, mostly just interested in having working discs and manual but because I love the game so much I felt like I have to get um, all of the <laughs> papers that came with it. And this second disc Again, I suppose this wasn't included in the English release, might be wrong on that, correct me if I am. But yeah, it's just preview of other Square Square's products from the time. I believe there's only like one playable demo and handful of mm, unplayable demos and trailers and so on. But yeah, <laughs> after purchasing the Final Fantasy VII I felt like I really need to get this game in my collection because I don't have a mm, physical copy of the Japanese release of the game. And that's all my retro collecting also. Still haven't continued with the um, from software collecting, <laughs> maybe I need to get back to it now after some mm, Final Fantasy games. 
but anyway, already way too long video. And so this must be all for this one. Thanks for watching and bye.